High stakes in Hamburg as President Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin meet face to face for the first time today at the G20 summit in Germany. President Putin and I have been discussing various things, and I think it's going very well. We've had some very, very good talks. Uh, we're going to have a talk now, and obviously that will continue. But we look forward to a lot of very positive things happening for Russia, for the United States, and for everybody concerned. And it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. It was scheduled to last about 30 minutes, but the two leaders met for over two hours, even ignoring the first lady who gently tried to get them to wrap it up. And it appears there was at least one big accomplishment, an agreement to begin a limited ceasefire in Syria beginning on Sunday. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who was in the room where it happened, gave us some insight as to what else they discussed. <coughs> the president opened the meeting uh, with President Putin by raising the concerns of the American people regarding Russian interference in the 2016 election. Uh, they had a very robust and lengthy exchange on the subject. Uh, the president pressed President Putin on more than one occasion regarding Russian involvement. Meanwhile, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov cast the conversation in a different light, claiming that President Trump accepted Putin's assurances that Russia didn't meddle in the election. Now, Greg, before we delve into all of that, Hamburg or Hamburg? Ba. Hamburg. <laughs> That's what I say. And CNN should say that too, because uh, Donald Trump started the meeting with Putin by raising concerns over the election meddling, according to Tillerson. <clears throat> that sound of a toilet flushing right now coming from Atlanta is CNN's bogus narrative, because they said, according to a source, right. that he would not confront him over that, and he, and he did, so maybe they might refute this that. This was also, they did something like this just a few weeks ago, where they said, they, remember they had to correct it, they Comey said... Comey was going to testify yes. for yeah. that, and he didn't. Yeah. Right, right. The other thing, too, is I'm really, and I don't know if we're doing it on our network, because I, I, I always watch the opposition, or the People who set fires and... and, and throw uh, rocks at people are not called protesters. If, then all arsonists are protesters. People who bomb buildings, you could call them demolitionists. But I've been, I, all day I was at the gym, not all day, but I I'm watching, I, I, I'm watching, no, I'm really, really good, really good, 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 check out these guys. I'm watching MSNBC Get that because body. If, you're, if you're at a gym in New York City, all you're going to see is MSNBC or CNN. CNN. Because CNN bores people to tears and MSNBC doesn't offend you. So you're watching this and all they're saying is, a protester is, is throwing rocks. A protester is setting fire. No, they're not a protester. They are a thug. Yeah. They are a criminal. And, and, and then they equate the cops with the protesters. They go, the protester did, the cops and the protesters are fighting. The co you know, the cops started it. No, no, the cops are there because the, the, the thugs are anarchists. there. Anarchists. The anarchists. They they're, not even, you know, they're not even anarchists. They don't have any beliefs. They have no alternatives. They're there because they get cameras. And then, and then MSNBC just films them and treats it so rom romantically. It makes you just scream. You know what makes me nuts, though, is that these people are anti-globalist, yeah. anti-capitalist, and some of them are anarchists, as you described, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are anti-Trump. But you see them somehow as all thugs, but guess what? What? I think a lot of them are in line with Donald Trump's anger at free trade, anger at climate deals. Anger at no Find borders. one who's against the climate deal and I'll oh. give you a thousand dollars. I'm saying no, <laughs> they they don't don't have a find want. one find one how much? thousand bucks. Oh. You find no, one no, thug oh, right here. Gravel. So you find yeah. one yeah. thug yeah. Yeah. find one thug who's against climate it's change, a thousand no, bucks. But you want to just call these guys thugs, but I don't hear you say that when Trump people who are anti trade They don't throw rocks oh, and they don't set fire. Again, a thousand dollars. Find a Trump protester who sets a car on fire. Can I get some of this action? Jesse wants a thousand dollars. This is this is like you draw a circle, you know. And yeah. The Trump people here and Bernie people here. Yeah. And you know so, what? They kind of meet, so but guess, they're not violent. So guess what, Juan? Yeah. This yeah. segment, we are going to talk about the protesters later on in the show. Are we? Yes. I Sorry about so. that. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get to we'll get to it. But, um, no big deal. I forgot. Let's talk uh, just a little bit about the accomplishment that was made today, um, Jesse, which is basically now we've been. Finally, have some movement to at least get a ceasefire in a small part of Syria in the southwest region, with the hope that, with well, a lot of details out to be worked out, that some humanitarian assistance can finally get to the innocent people that are there. It's good news on the surface. This could have been gift wrapped beforehand to set it up like a big achievement after the meeting. 
and who knows how long it's going to last. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed. I thought it was a very high stakes meeting, and I think Donald Trump made the country proud. I think the media thinks that Donald Trump's going to come into a meeting like this with his fly down and start shining Putin's shoes. Mm -hmm. So I think when he goes in there, he, the expectations <laughs> game helps him. The optics were good. He won the handshake game big time. Oh, he did? He looked comfortable <laughs> and at ease and serious. And then Melania was seated next to Vladimir Putin at the dinner. They both speak German, so that looked really good. On substance, like you said, we have that accomplishment in Syria, but they also talked about cybersecurity and trade and Ukraine. But that, I did think that was a little weird that they that we have Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, Lisa, announcing that we apparently are going to do some joint initiative with Russia on cybersecurity. Yeah, that's a little ironic. <laughs> <laughs> really? But look, but I also think that sort of this buildup regarding the uh, election meddling, uh, to me, just seems grossly overbuilt. Because you look at all these other issues that we're facing as a nation and things that are, uh, President Trump should talk to Putin about and talk to Putin about. As you mentioned earlier, 500,000 Syrians killed throughout the civil war. Uh, we've got ISIS in Syria as well, which is obviously a huge threat. Uh, Russia increased trade with North Korea by 73 percent in the first two months of 2017. Uh, they're also trying to box the U.S. in with China with, with what we're facing North Korea right now. North Korea now can launch an uh, ICBM uh, within range of Alaska. So of all the things that we are facing right now and all the threats that we're facing, not to diminish the election meddling, but it doesn't seem uh, quite up there with some of these other things. Right. Well, um, uh, there, Senate... Major Minority Whip, Dick Durbin, he had a little something to say about President Trump in the meeting. Let's listen to that. Senator, what's the most positive thing you have to say about Vladimir Putin and the most negative? Well, the most positive thing is he is gifted in his knowledge of history. Our president is not. He certainly knows uh, how to meet with foreign leaders and to push his agenda. Our president has limited experience in that. He knows the intelligence agencies of Russia since he was a member of the KGB for a period of time. Our president uh, tends to deride his own intelligence agencies and their findings. So he's in a strong hand in this negotiation compared to our president. Jesse? <laughs> Dick Durbin and the Democrats criticized Donald Trump for kissing Putin's ring for the last six months. He just heaped praise on Vladimir Putin like I've never heard That's Donald Trump point. ever <laughs> say in his entire public career. And I think a lot of people like to believe that Vladimir Putin is this cagey, cerebral, calculating guy that gets his agenda through. That's just because he walked all over President Obama for the last eight years and got everything he wanted in Syria, saved Obama's skin after the red line was crossed, came into Ukraine. President Obama gave the Ukrainians our allies food instead of heavy artillery and then interfered in our election, allegedly, and President Obama did nothing. So, of course, Vladimir Putin looks like this very strong leader that gets everything done when he faces President Obama, who wasn't even competing. I think, I think that it was uh, Donald Trump who had such high praise for Vladimir Putin. I think what Dick Durbin was doing was comparing the two and by comparison saying Putin looks much better. But let me just I've say... I've never seen any let me just say, run down a on, sitting on, president while they were overseas give like Dick Durbin here. just did uh, to President that's Trump. Not, let, me just, let me just say, Can you give me it was Donald Trump today who sticks out his hand. I don't know how he won the handshake war, by the way. But anyway, he sticks out his hand <laughs> show you and says, second. it's an honor to meet you. This is but an honor on, to meet this like guy who like, is invading people. That's no, diplomacy. No, no. Well, that's diplomacy? No. Because this is diplomacy the guy law. that interfered in an American he election and seeks to undermine <laughs> democracy. <laughs> At least he didn't battle him. Let though. me just say, in addition <laughs> to which, it's just striking to me that you get one set of uh, description of the events from Sergei Lavrov and another set from well, Tillerson. Welcome to political spin. Uh, no, who do you believe? Do you I believe don't. The Russians? Listen, you know what I believe? Yeah. I believe Tillerson when he said, what we try to do is not focus on the hacking or the spread of disinformation. We're trying to move forward and try to get them to promise not to do it again. Well, I'm glad you don't How believe the Russians. How weak is that? Man. Oh, you think no, Russia is weak? Oh, At is least he's not John right. Kerry giving oh, away billions of dollars you to the Iranians. Let me get Greg in for a second, because it is interesting that the left has spent the last um, eight months or so um, dissing the Russians, right, and, yeah. and saying you can't trust them. And then today, Lavrov is out with his spin of the uh, meeting, and they believe Lavrov? Well, the, the narrative that started was, even before they came out of the meeting, that Putin 
was already the victor. If you were watching it, he already won. And their logic was that just by meeting Putin, Putin is one, and that the longer the meeting went, right. the more respect Putin got. If, if, if the media had gone to see the Titanic, they would say the boat won. <laughs> because they are so screwed. They are, they, their uh, confirmation bias has now closed their ne vision so narrowly. They can't see anything, anything, including, you know, that dick. Well, Durbin. I, I think, I think the Democratic Party has the way same. overreached here. <laughs> the Democratic Party is way overreached here on uh, the Russia issue. I mean, you saw recently Senator Chris Murphy saying, oh, maybe we should slow it down with all this Russia talk. Uh, four special elections lost. The Democratic National uh, Committee raised, I think, $4.3 million, which is the least amount they have since 2003. Uh, and, and I think that this is really uh, a disservice to the party in trying to run this narrative. And further, uh, Durbin is basically trying to paint the president as ill-prepared to be president of the United States. Well, what did President Obama ever do before he was president? He never ran anything. How was he possibly set up to be president of the United the States? Community Durbin organizer. endorsed him. Durbin stood behind him in 2008. Uh, for to be president of the United States. So, I mean, just what a joke. All wait right. a second, wait a second, wait a second. This guy was a state senator and a United States senator. One I don't term think, he I don't think that I don't think Donald Trump was any he ran held in any political a, office. A billion dollars but, multi, uh, but here's, here's the thing. Last, last, last point, one. Okay, so go. here's the thing. So, the guy that I believe, who's our guy, Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, says, basically, we just have an intractable disagreement. That's a quote with the Russians with regard to Russian interference in the election. Putin says, nah, we didn't do it. And apparently Donald Trump says, well, okay, but let's move on. This to me well, is like, Putin, okay, wow. Go. Sure. So right. you were in the meeting. <laughs> no, the, Tillerson, our guy. I think guy. Should, I think we should invade Russia. Apparently we'll move on. We should I don't think invade that's Russia is what you're saying. Obey Russia? No, no. Invade, invade Russia. Invade, invade. no, but I'm just saying, you right, know, well, Trump's busy <laughs> tweeting about fake media Maybe we should be as tough as President Obama was on Russia and do nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah.